these two people I met a while ago, uh, they did a film called uh, Meet the Patels, which was a kind of a documentary about uh, Ravi's kind of life looking for a wife in the modern age. Here I was, almost 30, never married, which in our culture is like... Code red. Code red. We are having a great time with the family, eh? Next time, we are going to come with the grandchildren. Here's the thing. Mom and Dad's eyes, I had no idea how to get a girlfriend. I don't know how they fell in love, but Mom and Dad are the happiest couple I've ever seen. The way you guys married, would that work for me as well? Yeah. Not even a doubt. There's a matchmaking. This girl is good with that boy, but that boy is good with this girl. So all the girls and all the boys get married. Dad sent me 20 pictures and resumes of matrimonial candidates, which is totally normal, right? How are we going to set it down? It's not going to happen on our marriage. I don't want you guys jumping and getting all these other people involved. Looks good, so I'm going to forward this to Ravi, okay? Within weeks, my biodata was in the hands of uncles, aunts, family, friends, and complete strangers. Hey, I'm Ravi. Hey, I'm Ravi. Hey, I'm Ravi. Oh, wait, we got a minute. This is exhausting, isn't it? I see progress. No messages. No! Pretty impressive. <laughs> I'm just filming. That's just weird. I love that I get to watch this. Put that camera down right now. Gita was mainly behind the camera the whole time, filming this whole thing, while Ravi was kind of her subject, which she followed around and uh, recorded everything that he did. Yeah, so she's definitely check out Meet the Patels on Netflix. It's it's a great documentary. It's very funny, very touching, uh, and it's a nice documentary. So. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about that, and uh, we'll just see what happens. How do we? Uh, how do we want to do this? Just start at the beginning of the story. Right. You guys both worked on this thing called uh, Meet the Patels. That's where I met you guys. Mm -hmm. And uh, can you tell me what happened after that? Like, what? You know, was it a big response or? When the film first was completed, we actually had a hard time getting it into festivals and getting it seen. We uh, it just, for whatever reason, it wasn't getting a lot of um, positive feedback. And so we eventually thought, okay, well, let's just get it into any festival so we can show it to people because we, and you might remember this, we all who are part of it felt really proud of it. And we actually had a hard time figuring out why people didn't love it as much as we did. Like we, we really kind of took our inner critics and you know, had our funders watch it. We were like, look, tell us why it's not getting, you know, any buzz or anything. And, and nobody could figure it out on our own team. And so we stuck with our guts and thought, okay, well, we think it's great. We just think it needs to get past all the gatekeepers and be shown to just normal people like an audience. So we kind of begged our way into a festival in, uh, let's see, Canada, in Toronto called Hot Docs. And they showed the film. It wasn't even in competition. It wasn't, you know, it didn't even make that echelon. <laughs> and it was the world premiere. And then, but the good news is it was like a 700 person theater. And my dad, who is very spirited, uh, said, well, we're going to fill the theater. Because we all had this gut feeling that if normal, regular moviegoers saw it, they would like it. So my dad called all the Patels that he could. He found the phone book of Toronto, you know, of Toronto, knowing my dad. And he called all the people that he could, all the Patels and said, hey, we need to motivate. We need to mobilize and get people to show up at the theater. So that all the Patels were, you know, putting flyers up at the temples and they were going into the city and putting them into banks and post offices. And next thing you know, that room was packed when we had that one screening. And not only was it packed, but the word of mouth went crazy. The film did great that night and people started telling their friends about it. And so the next, they, I think we had two screenings and the second screening was packed and there was a line around the block of people trying to get into our film. And so then the festival called me and they said, look, we have, we have not seen a reaction like this before from a film. So we're gonna add more days of your screening. So they added more screenings and that's really how Meet the Patels found its place on the platform. It wasn't that it was accepted or had this easy road. It didn't get into Sundance, didn't get into Tribeca, uh, didn't get into South by Southwest. I mean, it was, it was really one of those uh, viral things, you know, that, that the 
it just became a popular film in the most kind of, uh, you know, grassroots way. When we were releasing the movie and, you know, doing like all this press, I did the Adam Carolla show and he said the funniest thing. He said, he's like, oh man, those cartoons are like so good. He's like, but I realized like if I were ever to make a cartoon of your dad, I would just use your dad's face. <laughs> Isn't that hilarious? It's, He's like, your dad is the cartoon version of is. himself. And I was he like, is. yeah. I was like, you probably say that. I feel like that's probably the case for me and my dad. We both have like yeah. really kind of muppety, yeah. quirky faces. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, man, I get complimented on that stuff all the time. So I hope you're proud of it, man. Because I know... Yeah. You're right. It was a slog. Like it was a mess. Like, you know, <laughs> you know, the only thing that I think got Geeth and I through it was just uh, an inability to quit, even though we, we wanted to quit many times and we tried to quit and we tried yeah. to fire each other and, you know, all these things, like it was, it was <laughs> so hard. Um, and it went on for so long and we both also, you know, I think probably everyone has this who works in our field, which is kind of a, you know, an inability to be done. Like, that's probably what a lot of, like, almost all of us are perfectionists. And yeah. when you actually are in the world of, like, deadlines and money, that's a tough thing to reconcile. And for Geeta and I, this was, like, kind of a film school. Like, we went through so much of a curriculum. Like we literally were like reading books about story and studying different films. And we made so many different iterations of this movie. Um, and, you know, it was just exhausting and hard, but man, I'm so proud of it. I, it it's, it's like the feeling that that movie gave me in terms of what, you know, the kind of social impact of something, how it can affect other people, how it can create interesting conversations but also the extent to which making things can be introspective and improve your relationships with people like your sister. Like once you, now that I've felt that the way so strongly in the way that I did for me to tell, it's like, I'm now I'm just chasing that same feeling in everything else I do. I agree. It, it definitely felt like we became the filmmakers we wanted to be making that film. And, and then after we finished the film, we thought, okay, so this is, this is what's real. This is home base, you know? Yeah. I mean, it launched both of our careers in a big way. Yeah. Um, well, we got representation. Well, Ravi, you, Ravi already had representation, but I could not get arrested <laughs> in Hollywood and could yeah. not get agents. And it's funny how that film, which we did really for fun at first, it wasn't something that we were like, oh my God, this could change our career. It was nothing like that. We did it because we were interested but that yeah. film is what um, got me representation and changed my whole career. So Gita, so what are you working on now? Or what are you doing these days? Uh, I've been a director for hire for the last, since Meet the Patels came out, I've been doing television directing. Mm -hmm. So I probably, what, how long has it been now? Four or five years since the film came out? It's been um, oh, five, over five maybe. Over yeah. Five years, because I think it came out. We had festivals for like 2014, I want to say, and then I want to say the Netflix, Netflix. It came out on Netflix like 15 or January 2015. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, by the way, Jim, she won't say this, but she's like one of the hottest female, like just one of the hottest directors, I guess, in television right now. Her <laughs> career is insane. It's it's really been. I mean. Honestly, ever since Meet the Patels, it's been like a rocket ship. It's been so awesome to watch her grow and succeed. And like, I mean, look, she's always been insanely talented, but like, you know, I, I can't do a thing without getting her opinion now. I mean, it's just, it's, it's been really cool. Well, that's good. That's I've just been working for people, honestly. It's been, it's been a good education. Um, it's just, you know, I've, I've been able to really practice directing because I, I had never directed uh, scripted stuff before. So, and my brother has been awesome. We, uh, we hope to work together again, but we just, we worry that we're going to kill each other. So we're not really sure. <laughs> we, have a good thing, we have a good thing now, which is just like yeah. we ask each other's advice on things. Yeah, and we like to produce each other's stuff. We're trying to start producing each other's stuff now, which is yeah. good. 
We saw your your new uh, series, Pursuit of Happiness. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah, so I, I I wanted to see it before I talked to you guys, and uh, yeah, I thought it was really amazing, good. isn't it? But right now he's got a show coming out on Netflix. I don't know how he does so much. He has a show coming out called Messy that he wrote, and he's in. Uh, the title's changed. It's called Bog Beanie Bog now, Gita. Oh, really? I may have not told you. Yeah. <laughs> what happened? Uh, just, you know. They Indianized it? We wanted to change the title, so we changed it to Bog okay. Beanie Bog. Okay. Was... You'll have to, what does that mean? Bog means uh, run in Hindi. Oh, Bago. Yeah. Oh. So Bog, and then the main character's name is Beanie, so Bog Beanie, Beanie Bog. Bog. Yeah. Okay. Run, Lola, run kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So he's got that show, and then you've got this HBO Max series that you were out, right? happiness, and yeah. then he's got another documentary um, series that he's working on that he, well, I think you're in post on it right now, mm -hmm. uh, that's about comedians. It's kind of like uh, drinking coffee. What is that? Seinfeld? Yeah, the Seinfeld Comedians in Cars. Yeah, Comedians in Cars, but it's, it's with every episode, it's like an interview with a different comedian in India is the first season and then every season is going to be a different country and it's phenomenal. I love, I, you know, all of these are so kind of all consuming because Ravi's put himself into all of them, like in every way. So I think it's just a matter of when we're going to have time to do something new because yeah. I think an animated series or another film, which we've also talked about is it's, it would be all or nothing again, like we did with Meet the Patels, you know, as you know, Jim, it's just, yeah. You can't really Put the band together. back together. The band, yeah. we're getting the band back. I know we want to get the band back together, but I think I think that's part of it. Is um, you know, Ravi's basically done everything in his dreams in the last year, so <laughs> I think we just we're all standing in line to figure out when we can get back in there <laughs> with the guy. <laughs> Whatever, Gita's busier than I am. She's, I mean, you know. Whatever. It, she, I think things are good and we're both just working on things that we're really excited about. Yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, whenever we can find time and it feels like our highest priority individually, then we'll do it. Yeah. Yeah. You did a pursuit of happiness and you said you're making more of those. Oh no. I mean, I have four out right now and I'm basically just waiting to hear from HBO max if they, want to do more so I, i'm kind of at their whim i mean yeah that's the way it works in this game so we'll see i have no idea i mean uh did you did you come up with the idea hey i'm gonna i want to go to different parts of the world and talk about this and that and the other Is yeah you know what happened was uh, so the show was originally at cnn up until the pandemic at which point everything got turned on its head but thank god hbo max wanted it and so when i met with cnn that was on their request that I came in and met with them because they were looking to meet new talent and they had, you know, a slot opening up because of the passing, the unfortunate passing of Bourdain. And so that was just, you know, a series of meetings where we were kind of just getting to know each other. And then they finally said, hey, we want to give you an opportunity to make a pilot. And I basically had I don't know, six or seven weeks to come up with a concept and shoot it and, you know, basically create like a sizzle slash pilot. And, um, and then based on that, I got ordered, you know, to series. So that's how it went. Well, it's a really amazing. I mean, the, you know, the production value is really good. I mean, it's, you know, following you and whoever around and the places you go to is very interesting Thanks. I really liked your, you know, again, seeing your mom and dad and seeing the 65 anniversary. Yeah, it was a birthday party. Yeah, birthday yeah, yeah. party. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks, That was man. great because you weave that into yeah, the whole episode. Fun. Yeah, you were like talking about, you know, old age and how people deal with that and then your opinion of that and then your mom's birthday and meeting all those people. And, uh, you know, I thought that was really nice, so. Thanks, man. Uh, Thanks. Yeah, it was yeah. it was a slog. It was uh, it was terrifying. It's just a lot of work. Like the the kind of production expectations, mm -hmm. you know, the limitations and. 
But in no, this case, like a documentary. What's that? Well, in this case, you had like a team of people who were editing it and shooting it, and you were. Yeah, we had we had a team of people, but we had limited time, and you know, I think because it's so much my voice, um, you know, and I cared so much, it was just, you know, we had an amazing team, and that's helpful, obviously. But at the same time, it's not like I could just like go do the thing, and then you know, I was. Pre, I was full time in pre-production. I was, you know, kind of, you know, it was, the whole thing was kind of my vision. And then even in post, I was, I was there cutting and, you know, doing everything. And so it was, it was a lot. It's what I wanted to. And it was, it, you know, again, I would say because of Meet the Patels, I had a very strong sense of what I wanted to get out of it. And and it's really interesting because you show your whole dynamic between your, your your wife and yourself, and it's nice because it it's 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 real. You know, it's not like yeah. you know, hi, I'm Robbie Patel. Today we're going to learn all about the you know, and then the wife is like, that's right, honey. You know, well, let's take a look at our darling daughter. You know, and then it's well, like, you know, it's you funny. Know. That's that's actually how I figured out what to do as a premise was because I realized I'm not like an expert in anything, but the thing that I knew I had done before that I felt comfortable with was being uh, personal and, 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 and vulnerable and, you know, um, you know, talking about things that I'm genuinely, that I care about and that I'm curious about, which primarily are my relationships. So that was an eat, like, I'm not an expert on food or anything, but like, one thing that I feel like I do put a lot of effort into that I really do care about um, that I think is unique to me in the sense that most people I don't think want to talk about those things on camera or at least aren't comfortable doing it. Um, so that, that was, you know, showcasing my relationships was kind of, a, the, kind of the only thing I could think of that I could do that would be kind of d different. Mm -hmm. And the places you visit are very unique, uh, especially the last one with the, the death cafe. I mean, that's kind of like thrown at the beginning kind of as a, what is that? Yeah. Um, that's one of my favorite scenes. In the yeah, you, yeah. It's a very somber place. And you, you had that friend that told you all about what happened to him, which was really, you know, that's like, wow, this is so that story insane. Yeah. And then, and then, you know, at the end, yeah, he's, he's pretty emotional, but <laughs> you, you kind of, you know, you're saying your goodbye, whatever. And then <laughs> you definitely put that joke in there uh, just uh, to lighten it up, just to kind of keep it like. <laughs> well, I hope we get to do more. We need to, you know, I think people want to see a Gita and Ravi episode. Yes, exactly. We do. Which, by the way, I don't know if I've told you this, Gita, but my plan when we do an episode is for me to be behind the camera during <laughs> our episode so that the tables of Meet the Patels can be turned. Oh, that'd be That fun. would be awesome. Wouldn't that be so that funny? That would be great. That'd be so funny. And did yeah. you know, you but know. it would be a very boring episode, honestly. <laughs> no, no, no. It would be, I think people would love it because I would just be <laughs> putting you through the bullshit I had to go through. <laughs> <laughs> I, I tell you what, man, Gita deserves a trophy for what she had to go through because I, I, you know, only only with time do you really come to appreciate. Like she was very pushy, like, and <laughs> and she also would ask me questions that I found extremely annoying. Okay? But <laughs> but at the end of the day, and you only know this with experience, like you're just trying to get other stuff, other moments, and they do, you know, some of the best stuff in the movie is a result of conversations that she forced us to have that I didn't want to have on camera because I thought they were stupid or <laughs> annoying, you know, and, you know, I was definitely a dick sometimes. So uh, I will, you know, I will give her what she gave me and I will let her, you know, do an exercise in, in mutual empathy. Uh, yeah. And she can be a, she can be a jerk back to me and give me a taste. <laughs> of All right. Well, anyway, thank you so much for being on here. It's been good catching up a little bit with you. And yeah, we'll definitely do it when we, you know, this is all over. Hopefully, you too, so, brother. Yeah. yeah. Take care, Jim. Take thank care, you. man. Lots of love to you and your family. All right. You too. You too. Bye. All right, bye. Say hi to your mom and dad for me. Oh, we will for sure. Bye. All right, man. Okay. That's what I love about being Patel. They don't keep score. 
They don't count favors. You are unconditionally a part of the biggest family in the world. Well, that was Ravi Patel and Gita Patel. Ravi and Gita, they made a film called Meet the Patels, which I did the character designs for. And you should definitely check that out. It's on Netflix. It's a, and uh, check it out. It's pretty funny. And uh, there's some animation in it. And it's, uh, it's, it's enjoyable. So that's the first time I met them. And we worked on that. And now hopefully you see Pursuit of Happiness. Check out Gita's uh, IMDB page. And yeah, just see what's, what they're all about. Um, anyway, I want to thank them for coming on Anime Educator Today and talking to us and uh, letting you know who they are. And if you enjoyed this interview in any way, please leave a comment below or you can just subscribe. Push that little subscribe button right there. And uh, I've got a couple other um, videos here if you want to take a look at those. And uh, thanks for watching.